Domina is a roguelite management game set in ancient Rome. Now I know the words management game will call to mind games like the Football Manager series, but instead of men playing footsies, in Domina, you're in charge of training and gearing up gladiators, and then sending them to their death. Or if they're successful, they'll bring you fame, fortune, and more slaves to train into gladiators. On the surface, it looks like a simple game. I mean, just how hard could it be to train a bunch of guys and then throw them into an arena? Well, Domina offers a surprising level of depth and complexity, and it is for this reason I found myself glued to this game for several hours. For a start, each gladiator has their own inventory of weapons and armor, which must be repaired, replaced, or upgraded. They also have their own stats determining their health points, agility, weapon skill, defense, strength, and meditation. Now, what is the meditation stat? Well, in battles, you can either control the gladiators manually or allow the computer to control them. Their skill in battle is affected by the meditation stat. The higher their meditation, the more effective they fight. You can raise their AI stat by sending them into battle or by training it at the ludus like any other stat. Now, why would you not want to control your gladiators manually? Well, honestly, letting the computer take over is the better option here. As you progress, your opponents get stronger and smarter, and you'll be taking on groups of 3, 5, or even 15. It gets to the point where your primitive monkey brain can't keep up, so it's better to let the computer take over and fight for you. Besides, if you're the manager, you're responsible for training these guys and making sure your clients are happy. You don't see John Madden gearing up throwing the old pigskin across the field. So just sit back, enjoy the spectacle of helpless men dismember each other in a blood-soaked, pixelated mess while some heavy synth music plays in the background. Each gladiator also has a morale stat, and it is up to you to keep your gladiators happy by offering them rewards in coin and wine, and later on, you can hire employees such as an educator to keep morale up, or you can get your master architect to build them their own private quarters. Higher morale also means they'll perform better in the arena. However, if a gladiator's morale is low, they'll perform worse and eventually ask for their release. Of course, you can deny their release in the hopes that things will get better, or grant them their release, which in turn increases everyone else's morale. There are also three different types of gladiators you can train. Thraex, your standard gladiator that uses a sword and shield. Mormillo, a gladiator that specializes in weapons and can either dual wield or use a large two-handed sword. And Retiarius, a spear-wielding gladiator that can also throw nets to temporarily trap opponents. Each gladiator has an advantage in a rock-paper-scissors kind of way but I found the Retiarius was the most overpowered thanks to their net. Hence why some of my strongest gladiators turned out to be Retiari. And, on top of all of that, there are also the Blessings of Jupiter, which are these cards that can give your gladiators specific perks. Man, there's just so many things to manage in this game. Now, being a roguelike game, random events do occur, but they're less frequent as you would expect and they mostly deal with the two NPCs that you have to appease and gain favor with, the Legate and Magistrate. Either they're getting into trouble, or asking for a favor, or they may ask to borrow a gladiator for an event, but other times a war hero may return to challenge your strongest gladiator, and other times you're just giving away money, food, or wine to appease the Magistrate or Legate. 
maybe I didn't progress far enough or play long enough to see, but most of the random events felt inconsequential regardless of what option I chose. If I displeased one or the other NPC, I would just organize an exhibition match for them where I send a low rank gladiator to beat up a slave, thus regaining the favor that I lost. However, where the randomness does play heavily into are the fights themselves, and a lot of this game can come down to the RNG. Sometimes the circumstances of the fight are in your favor, and other times, not so much. Sometimes your opponents are far outclassed, and other times, you can get your ass kicked by a gladiator far stronger. And losing your best gladiator can be heart-wrenching, especially if they were with you for a long time. But I did find a way to cheese this game. Unhappy that your gladiators died in battle? Well, just before you return to the Ludus, exit the game to the main menu and select your save file. You'll return to a point before the battle, you'll be prompted to enter another battle, only this time, the opponent will be different. Keep doing this until your gladiators are unstoppable, and the rest of the game will be a breeze. By the end of it, I had a half a dozen maxed out gladiators who would absolutely destroy anyone. So, is there a story to this game? Actually, yeah, there is! Domina takes place during the final years of the Roman Empire. While the Empire crumbles, a distraught Roman public seeks escapism through the gladiator games, and you're in charge of providing the fighters. The objective is to train your gladiators to where they are strong enough to beat at least 3 out of 9 regional champions. Once you've done that, after a full in-game year, your gladiators compete in the Grand Championship, where a massive 15 on 15 melee is organized. Once you're victorious, however, you're betrayed by the Legate and Magistrate who force you into the arena, where you have to control yourself, the Domina, who is armed with only a knife. The only help you get are the slaves and fighters you granted freedom to throughout the course of the year. And this fight went exactly how you think it went. I got absolutely smashed within seconds and got the bad ending. So, all that training and fighting over a year meant absolutely nothing because I got slaughtered in the end. Damn, that's harsh. Well, luckily this ending doesn't happen on endless mode, and I had a much better time there, building up what was practically a private army full of elite fighters and smashing the competition at every fight. For the most part. While the nature of management games sound like a boring slog, this game proves that with good enough theming and intricate mechanics, you can turn a boring management sim into a heart-pounding, adrenaline-filled rush that can really draw you in and hook you. When I started playing this game for review purposes, I figured I would only play about half an hour, take a break, then do another half hour. But next thing I knew, two hours had passed without me realizing. I mean, heck, after I'd gathered enough footage for this review, I continued playing this game in my spare time for several hours. I just couldn't put it down. At a price tag of 10 US dollars, I got more than my money's worth from playing Domina. I never thought I would get hooked on a management game, but this is one that's definitely worth getting into. While it seems like a simple game at first, Domina offers a surprising level of complexity. And even though the blood sport of gladiator games are long gone, unless you count those modern gladiator fights or UFC, Domina allows you to recreate the spectacle where lives were disposed of and innocent men were dismembered, all for the sake of entertainment. Playing this game reveals the true nature of us human beings as sadistic, manipulative creatures without remorse. I highly recommend this game. Well, thank you for watching, my friends. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. This is Marlo, signing out.